So Freunde, nach zwei Jahren YouTube haben wir jetzt das erste Mal die Möglichkeit, mit einem lokalen Einwohner der Vereinigten Arabischen Emiraten ein Video zu drehen. Wir haben hier Fares, er ist 29 Jahre alt, Multiunternehmer in Dubai und ich werde ihm heute viele Fragen stellen, wie es ist, local zu sein, wie man die Staatsbürgerschaft bekommt, was für Vorteile man hat, ob man Steuern bezahlen muss, wie das aussieht mit der Rente und wie er sich fühlt als local in dem Land, wo über 90% Ausländer sind und damit beginnen wir jetzt. So, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you are you. the Appreciate first time it. I have a local in my videos. And also like you are the second guy in my two years of Dubai that I meet a local guy. I have not too much with locals to do. And yeah, I would Appreciate tell like, uh, thank you for your time. I would tell of like course. that you introduce yourself. Like, who are you? Sure. Uh, I am Faris Al Ansari. Uh, no local national. I'm born and raised in Dubai. Proud uh, resident of Dubai and very happy to, to be here with you as well. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, it's nice to connect with different uh, communities within Dubai. So uh, that's, that's who I am. I'm a businessman in Dubai, uh, part of a family business uh, and uh, that's about it. Okay, so we start directly with the most asked question. How to get UAE citizenship? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> UAE citizenship, that's a very interesting topic actually. Yes, you are right, that's the question that comes up amongst uh, uh, everyone who comes to Dubai. Once you come to Dubai, you fall in love with Dubai and automatically everybody wants to get some sort of uh, citizenship. So in terms of citizenship, I mean, as a local, I can say I'm blessed that uh, we're born into it and we've we've been here I'm fifth generation Emirati actually so uh, we've been here since uh, since the beginning uh, so you can't really apply for a citizenship uh, but uh, pretty much through being born to it uh, as well as uh, obviously through marriage uh, for certain people but you have to be kind of born into it that's but that's the blessing I heard that your father has to be a local it's not enough if your mother is one so that's right. I mean, uh, the rules changed uh, over the over the years. Uh, I think uh, I'm I'm not quite sure, but I think the children of locals could could get the passport. And then, uh, for some time, it was only the father. And now, I think recently, it's been changed to 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 back to the mother. So if you're if you're a child of a local mother, you're able to to get the local passport. That's as far as I know now. You said you are in the fifth generation here. Yes. Dubai is now, I think, 51 years old. That's right. 51 years old. That's right. What was it before, like the nationals? Like where I heard that they come few people from Iran. Yes. Yeah. So very traditional, actually. Uh, back in the day, what was popular was trade, which is what uh, my great great grandfather was into. Um, obviously, in our our business, it's uh, it's a local uh, currency exchange business, so foreign currency and local currency, and uh, we're in the currency business, and we were one of the first to start that in UAE. Obviously, before that, it started with trade, so uh, trading currencies back and forth, not how you see it today. Uh, others were trading with pearls through through crossing water, and others were trading, uh, you can say, import and export overseas through through boats. So it was very different. And then you have people who were part of the part of the trading part of the ocean, people who were in the deserts. So uh, you have different sectors of that. But when you say 50, 51 years, it's actually since the union of the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. Way before that, all of the Emirates existed separately and mm. uh, as individual parts of uh, now today's country. So you had uh, the sheikhs of those those cities governing those whether in the desert and the land and now it's completely uh, it's completely different so yes the uae has actually been there since uh, since forever you can say since long time since long but time until it became the united arab emirates the yes. roots are like arab in general or how to say like gcc uh, arabs yes. are all the same roots or so you have uh, part of the uae you have those arabs who came from the desert who have been here since since the beginning, who are, who are from the desert and born and raised from the desert. And you have others who came from Yemen. You have uh, lots of people who came from Saudi, uh, Balochistan, Iran, Pakistan. You have lots of people from all around the world who have been here for generations and generations and have become uh, local. 
you can say in that sense but um, you would I would say the origins uh, stemmed from the locals of the desert within the UAE desert as well as uh, Saudi Yemen and Iran the next question is what are the benefits of being a local because you said you are yes. blessed that you are local yes. and there are a lot of mythos and you, is it the English word mythos? Like myths? Uh, uh, yes, a lot of a lot of stories and a lot yes. of myths. Yes, myth is so, correct. Yeah, sorry, it's like you know, you are directly rich. You are like this and this. And I want to know about the benefits because I heard that you get like when you are 18, you get like a loan Land. from the government. You get like a plot to build on it, and you pay it after That's 20 right. years. Can you explain it a little bit? So please? I'll tell you a little bit about the benefits. Of course, blessed is when I say blessed to be local is for many, many reasons. It's not simply because uh, you're financially blessed or you are uh, blessed for any other reasons. It's it's a cumulative, uh, you know, it's a, as a whole package, I can say blessed to be living in, in such a safe place and such a, such a country that every country looks up to. So in that sense, I say blessed. In a sense of benefits, yes, of course. But that, what your point that you made was, um, that it's a myth you're born as a rich local that's absolutely right uh, I mean not every local is born with lots of money I mean you have uh, families within the UAE that have been blessed to be part of trade back in the day and have made money generation down generation through businesses through trade import export whatever it may be commodities uh, and you have a lot of locals who are not not as blessed financially um, specifically you can say uh, Uh, a large portion of them, you can say, are not uh, not financially stable. But the government does a fantastic job in taking care of them. As you can see, if you drive around the UAE, you won't see people beggars, or you won't see people in the streets, or you won't, you will not see that. So, uh, luckily, we're blessed that the government takes care of them in terms of housing, in terms of uh, monthly allowances, food, you name it. So they do. The government does their fantastic I can say fantastic job because nowhere else takes care of their citizens as the government does so maybe not everybody was born rich in that sense or financially financially uh, blessed in the UAE but they are taken care of in many other ways so that's why I say blessed uh, because I think of it as a as a whole package as well as health care as well as um, we're given land I believe it's when you're 21 you're able to apply for the land if I'm not mistaken so um, you apply for the land as a local you have a land you can build on you can get a loan from the government without interest how much so is it like i heard one million dirham is it like uh, one million dirham is what i heard as well there are some uh, contingencies but the standard is yes one million dirham and interest free so as a young local man you're able to start start your life at least so in this sense and many other things i can say very blessed You didn't apply for because you don't know that much about this? Uh, that's right. I haven't applied, actually. I do have my land, uh, thankfully, but I haven't applied yet. I'm not ready to, to start building yet. So for now... Uh, you can do it also later. Like from 21, course. you can go also yes. with... You, there is a certain time limit. Uh, I think I'm not sure if it, it differs uh, as per the land that you have or the area, but I think it's about three to five years. You need to build something onto mm. it. So I've gotten mine recently. But um, I definitely have plans to build in the future, yes. I would like to know more about the benefits. Like, you know, we start when you were born. Yes. Your mother has like free health insurance to... That's right. So you're born for free. Like yes, every, exactly. <laughs> As you said, born for free. So from the moment you're born, I mean, there are no hospital bills okay. for your parents, uh, for your mother, father, whoever it may your be. Your parents no, get money no. for your birth? You get like children uh, money like I heard in Qatar they give like when you get so I'm not sure about that I honestly back in the day I'm not sure how it was but currently I know that uh, there is a program called Nafis which is which has recently been launched by the UAE government and it helps to support it's a support financial support scheme for different categories of locals so whether you are a local who has one child government gives you some sort of you can call it a side salary at the end of the month so that that amount differs if you have one child you get that amount so you're eligible if you're unemployed you have unemployment scheme now you have pension funds you have um, for example if uh, you are under a, a certain category of salary you get a certain amount 
So there are different financial schemes now to help support the locals who, who, uh, who live within the UAE. Very nice. Then you were born, you, when you have to go like to primary school or kindergarten, when does it I mean, start? it's up to choice. The, thankfully, within the UAE, you have, I mean, the educational system within UAE is phenomenal, I can say. And in the past 10 years, it has improved immensely. I mean, people are coming from abroad. Back in the day, everyone used to look at, for example, the U.S. to go for, uh, for their higher education or Europe or London or wherever it may be. Nowadays, people are coming to Dubai because schools are fantastic and you have one of the top uh, top schools in, in the world, you can say, in terms of standards within the UAE, um, as well as universities. I mean, you have the Canadian University, you have New York University uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, and you have you know, fantastic institutions here. So, uh, again, that goes to uh, the support shows uh, with the locals. Uh, you get uh, scholarships, financial scholarships here for the locals, so your tuition is paid. You have government schools here, uh, which are completely free. So if you want to send your kids to a government school, it's completely but free. But they are just uh, locals or also like other... It's which? for the locals, only for just the Emirati, okay. Emirati citizens, yes. So government, uh, government schools are for free. But they are also on a high standard, I think, right? Uh, they're on a higher standard. Not as high, obviously, as uh, private schools. But yeah, the public schools are, are, are fantastic. And a large majority of locals are enrolled in these public schools. So, yes. You know, kindergarten? You yes. know, like where you go with three to That's six right. before school. Also, like locals go there or how is this? Of course, of course. Myself, I mean, I started kindergarten when I was... Uh, okay almost three years old so yes I mean you have nursery and then you know, uh, it's pre-kindergarten and then kindergarten primary a lot of schools in Dubai such as my school we started with kindergarten on to primary junior and high school all in the same school so segregated in different places but in the same school so ultimately in Dubai you can start off in kindergarten and stay in the same school till you graduate so, nice. so that's, that's actually, it's quite nice. It gives you a sense of community. You're used to the school, the surroundings. So that helped me a lot growing up. And you grow up with all the people like together. That's right, that's right, exactly. Can you fail the classes or you get always like... No, of course, you, <laughs> <laughs> there is no, there is no special, special gold, uh, gold uh, you know, hall pass for locals. No, no, it's because, like, definitely. I live since two years here, uh, as I told you, and I get always like questions. People think I know everything from that's right. locals. <laughs> and I always tell them I never met a local really and I have like all the questions in my head one question is like uh, it's also a myth that the people tell like you don't get like traffic fines I wish <laughs> <laughs> if I open my uh, my RTA app for you right now you'll see a list of uh, fines up until you can imagine no uh, unfortunately those those are those are myths those are the myths. people I think from. like the locals can do everything here and no one cares and they are over the law but it can't be like this I tell that them perception has always been there uh, since since the beginning i mean because of the power and authority that emirati citizens have but nobody's above the law and uh, actually our our sheikhs in the country make that very clear and set a very high example for everybody so uh, thanks to them especially, especially uh, you can say sheikh mohammed within dubai uh, as well as our president sheikh mohammed bin zayed uh, they set a very a very humbling example for emiratis to show equality and to show that nobody is above the law uh, and I think that's very important in, in, in maintaining the stability of the city. I also tell them if they would be over the law, it would be like Texas, you know, they would shoot everyone, like, you know. They it would lead to chaos. Yeah. And as you can see, and everybody can, can see for themselves, uh, thankfully Dubai runs smoothly and it's far from chaos. So it's, it's thanks, to, thanks to the government and thanks to how, uh, how they control uh, certain aspects of the country and how things are equal. But I think you will know also like royal members, right? Royal family members. Yes, you get to know, you get to know if you're lucky enough, you get to know certain uh, members of the royal family, especially from school, I can say. Yeah. I know a few members of the royal family because we grew up together in school. Uh, mutual friends, the local communities, majlis, you can say when you go to somebody's majlis, which is like, a, uh, for example, Emiratis, a lot of them, most of them have majlises, which is like a small house outside your own house. Like guest house. Guest house, you can say, exactly. So to avoid, the purpose of this goes back to religion and culture. To avoid men coming into your house where there are women, they segregated to a, to a majlis. 
so you meet a lot of royals throughout majlises, weddings, funerals. Sadly, uh, yes, you if you're lucky enough, you come to know uh, you come to know many look many uh, yeah. royal family. I wanted to ask, but they don't get traffic fines, huh? Yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to uh, to answer. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny, but uh, uh, I mean, I would say they respect the law enough to to avoid such things. Uh, I know that personally from uh, some uh, close friends who I have who are a member of the royal family, and and they set uh, they set examples like you can't imagine. They they really set humbling examples for for the citizens here. So nobody has an excuse. Uh, they don't cross that barrier, even if, let's say, they're, uh, they don't get fined. They never take advantage of that. So they definitely set a great example for Emiratis as well as expats in the country. But it has to be also like this, right? In the leadership. Most of them. Yeah. Also, like, Sheikh Hamdan is, like, on Instagram, very humble, like, you know. You, it that's It has right. not even mentioned that he's, like, the crown prince. Of that's, that's what I was mentioning when it came to... Um, uh, having those experiences it's it's very humbling just simply due to the fact that the royals see themselves and we see them as part of the community so that's very important uh, setting they don't set a very uh, high high gap between uh, between the the living community you know you're very close you can see sheikh hamdan driving across the highway or in the metro or in the mall or sitting at the table next to you in the restaurant it's it's as uh, as close as that so i think that gives a sense of community and uh, and it's very important what are the next benefits like after finishing sh uh, after finishing school is it common that the people study or they run directly into the business or how so i can say it's split into two main parts uh, one part would be that yes they pursue their education, whether it's locally, as I said, very blessed for the Emiratis in a sense of, uh, of uh, support financially and uh, more than that from the government, which we get sponsors, sponsorships for. So um, either you go abroad or you study locally within the universities in the UAE or you go into the family businesses immediately, which is what a lot of people do. So it's, it's a bit of both. But do also like the rich families expect from the child that they finish school or they say like it's... Again, it depends. I would say from my experience from the locals that I know, uh, part of the Emirati community is um, mostly people like to pursue their education. And uh, from what I've seen, uh, parents, Emirati parents do push their kids to finish their education, whether it's high school or it's uh, whatever it may be, higher education or higher than that, uh, grad school. Uh, you know, they, they push them and I think that's very important and the government does a good job in promoting education here um, and supporting the locals, give, not to give them an excuse not, to, uh, not to, to leave their education behind. So it makes it very difficult for you not to want to study, I would, say, I would put it that way. I looked two years back for jobs. I looked always for jobs for a half year and on the career sites of the companies, they were always like, GCC nationals and like others. That's Can right. you tell about this? Like, I think like there are like there are jobs positions just for the uh, locals and yes. like for the. As an Emirati, I can say, or as a GCC national, I can say that it's split into two different uh, sectors. Uh, a lot of companies now, based on the uh, the rules within the UAE, have a certain uh, margin that they need to meet. So whether it's a public company, it's different, or a private company is different, they need to meet certain level of Emirati uh, nationals or GCC nationals as well within, uh, within the category of their, uh, their employees. Uh, for example, for private companies, it could be 10% of your employees have to be Emirati or GCC. Uh, so that's the reason that it's segregated because they have certain criteria, companies have criteria they need to meet in order to fulfill. So sometimes if a company has only 7% of their Emirati nationals and they need to reach 10, then they have to prioritize the job opportunities for the Emiratis and vice versa. So that's that's how it works basically. How much is like the minimum salary a local gets? That's the my the question most that wanted, <laughs> but I want to know the most. It's there is no such a minimum. When I go I can to Amir, they are like all locals. I always right. ask myself how they how much they get. 
it's uh, it's tough to say i mean it's very it, there are ranges so for example if you're in the banking sector as a local who is a graduate uh, with a university degree and you join your salary can be maybe 25000 dirhams plus starting a month yes monthly um, if you're in other governmental jobs it could be lower you could be starting at 15000 yeah, if but you're looking at no the, one starts under 10 right uh, again, it's uh, no. Uh, you have a lot of locals who 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 uh, who are who have their salaries under ten thousand. Yes, definitely you do. Uh, certain locals who have not completed their education, for example, even high school they have not finished, or they haven't gone for university, or a lot of locals who choose to work for private companies who offer lower salaries. That's based on the private company. It's their complete choice. Um, but yes, you do. You definitely do have locals who work under that. So then again, that's a myth uh, that people think that being a local automatically you are on a hundred thousand dirham salary. That's that's <laughs> definitely not how it works. What I want to know always is like when I I do like company setups, you know, like Piero, and I go always to the fingerprint station, and they look. I always bought the people there who work, <laughs> you know, like with no disrespectful, but like I thought myself do they apply for these jobs or they get like you know you have to do it like we need now people who do it also I think I think it's a bit of both I think there's a demand uh, definitely there is a demand uh, for governmental jobs or in the government sector and uh, a lot of the time there's a demand for it so as a local if you're in need of that job you'll apply automatically and you'll be onboarded uh, I don't think anybody works forcefully here but again it depends on which sector you're in, where uh, where you're working, um, how motivated you are to work in that area. Sometimes people are forced to work in certain areas just to support their families, so they're not necessarily as happy with their jobs. But um, I've seen a big improvement, I can say, over the past uh, three to five years, specifically with the government uh, offices within the UAE, like RTA, for example, or Tesjil, or Tesheel, or Amr, or whatever it may be. Um, a, a huge improvement and that's that's uh, honestly thanks to uh, thanks to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid for that because uh, he would go around uh, governmental offices himself personally and ensure that everything is intact even in the airport for example it's uh, uh, actual site visits by himself by his highness so um, I think that has a, a large influence and a big motivation for the Emirati nationals to work and uh, you know to to work let's say at their at their highest potential uh, so I've seen a big improvement. It's not like how it used to be back in the day. I had to laugh because like I heard a story. I also don't know if it's real. <laughs> and it was like Sheikh Mohammed went into a governmental department. I don't know which one. And then he saw like long queues of people. They were all like waiting and all the doors, doors were closed. And he went inside and the officers were like on the phone, like sleeping. And then on the same day, he let remove all the doors from the department I heard. It could be. I mean, I, <laughs> that specific story I haven't heard, but things like that do happen. And uh, the good thing is we're blessed because our sheikhs take immediate action when it comes to something that they're unhappy with or something that's not to the satisfaction of people. Immediate action is always taken. So I, I would believe that story if it's true. It's not hard to believe. <laughs> How is it like with paying Deva and like... So that's, uh, that's also one of, again, uh, endless blessings of being a local because, um, I mean, obviously it's much cheaper for Emiratis. Uh, uh, their Diwa bills are much cheaper in comparison to expats who live here. That's another uh, blessing of being, and I would say a blessing and a right of an Emirati uh, within the country. So um, uh, that's, that's, for that's talking about residential purposes. The commercial, it's, it's the same for all. So for example, you have an office and I have an office. Our Diwa bills would, would be almost the same compared to the usage and the size of the office. There is no advantage to being a local. The advantage comes to the residential. But is it like you pay nothing for Deva or like the no, half no, no. or one of third? Or? Not at all, not at all. Um, it's I can't really give you a percentage, but significantly cheaper. You can say it's maybe 80%, 70 mm. to 80% cheaper. So um, definitely that's in, again, for residential, yes, locals are, are, are blessed with that. How is it like with um, paying taxes? 
actually 5% VAT uh, where we are not exempt as locals to that. Everybody pays pays fairly. And now actually in uh, 2023, we have a corporate, corporate tax coming, uh, which is going to be a 9% tax. And that applies to everybody, all uh, business owners, uh, whether you are local or not. So applies to us as well. Yes. One question I uh, forgot. It's like a uh, cultural question. Does the woman work also like, or is it like not common that the ladies of the local families work? So actually another myth that people think is that, you know, for example, a lot of places around the world, you can say uh, Islamic countries don't promote uh, women working, but that's not the case in the UAE. Actually, many uh, ministers as well as gov government officials are women now. Uh, so you can uh, you can you can positively say that women have a strong role uh, within the industry in the UAE and throughout the recent years it's just become uh, more and more uh, you know uh, motivational for women to uh, to work because of these high positions that they have. I know lots of uh, local women who are CEOs who are. Uh, business owners, uh, very successful business owners, as I said, government officials, police force, military, uh, governmental offices, you name it. So uh, so definitely it's a myth if people think that uh, it's the men who work here, it's 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 actually not. Yeah, but as you told, like it's the people think it about whole Islamic uh, countries. How is it like with health insurance? Health insurance, as, as a local, you're blessed with free health insurance, and so are your kids, as well as if you marry a non-local, uh, she's, she's also, she can fall under your health insurance sponsorship. So in that sense, health coverage is fantastic within the UAE, uh, specifically between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Um, uh, so yes, no, no complaints in terms of uh, health insurance. It's, it's fantastic here for locals, yes. We talked already now about one prejudice and there are like a lot of prejudice like all Arabs are rich we talked about or like they waste money for luxuring and for nothing they have four wives you know like the standard things what is like your opinion about it and also like yeah I go to the next um, question after it. see uh, Dubai is a city that you can say today is focused on and the world has its eyes on Dubai um, you have people from all around the world. You have to remember, you have a 10 plus million population. Only 10% of that is the Emirati nationals. So 90% of this country is built off expats. And you have people from all around the world here. So uh, a lot of people show the good side of Dubai. And a lot of people, unfortunately, show the other side of Dubai, which is, uh, which is how they make it seem to the, to the world. A lot of it is, uh, most of it I can say is not true. So yes, a lot of prejudice going on, uh, as, as it does everywhere in the world, I think, but specifically somewhere like Dubai, where everybody, ha the whole world has their eyes on Dubai. Um, it's, uh, it's only natural that you will hear uh, such things. A lot of people don't, don't appreciate or don't value um, the growth of Dubai. And it, it stems out of jealousy as well, you can say. I, can, I always tell people everybody's jealous of Dubai or the UAE because of their progress within the, the world. So. Uh, it stems from from jealousy. Yes, yes, definitely it does. What is the biggest prejudice? What you disagree? Um, it's it's uh, it's very hard to say. I think it would go back to your first point that all Emiratis are you know super wealthy and nobody works and uh, uh, everybody's like uh, lazy uh, and splashes money as you say and wastes money and. Uh, that 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 those kind of things bother me because uh, we hear it a lot and we see a lot in movies and you know uh, fake news articles and pictures and actually it's not true I would say that uh, Emiratis are quite humble in comparison to uh, people from all around the world who I have seen so uh, it's a completely completely uh, fake notion that Emiratis are this spoiled and living this uh, glamorous life uh, I mean to a certain extent. Uh, it's true, but not in not in the way that in the negative way that people depict it to be. What do you feel about like um, Germany in the situation? Because you have also like a lot of connection to the German people here, and you will probably know that the Germans, since two years, like all the time shooting against uh, the UAE against Qatar, and like saying that slavery, that's bad, no human rights, and everything is bad there. 
Uh, again, it goes back to my back to the same point. See, over the past couple of years, the German community has grown incredibly in the UAE, and I've met so many Germans here myself. I'm friends with a lot of the German community. Uh, the smallest example is if you walk in the malls or if you're standing in an elevator. I mean, the amount of times you really hear people speaking German that shows you uh, how many how many uh, Germans have actually moved here. I know a lot of people that have moved here. Uh, for a better standard of living, for for tax purposes, for uh, uh, you know, for education, for business, whatever it may be. Um, so you have a large uh, number of Germans here uh, recently over the past years. A lot of them are very unhappy with their situations in Dubai, or they expected Dubai to be something else that it wasn't for them. So uh, they take back a lot of negative, uh, negative views, negative remarks. A lot of them not being true, and it creates a bad image in the eyes of people around the world. So backlash is natural. Uh, definitely, it is natural, and uh, it's you can't avoid it. But then again, you have um, a huge German community who are refusing to leave Dubai, and they call it their home, and they they will speak completely against those those negative claims. So uh, the Germans can speak against the Germans for themselves here. That's that's the beauty of Dubai. But the most, uh, the most news from Germany are like from the media, made by media, you know, not like by people who return back. Like That's right. Just That's right. Uh, propaganda yes. against. Uh, so I'll, I'll actually clarify. Uh, the people that, that, are, that give negative remarks, for example, who live here uh, or have lived here, the media takes that, mm. blows it way out of proportion uh, and makes it seem as if it's something it's not so if there is a, if there's a negative remark about dubai which there could be it's not a nowhere is a perfect place um, the media would take that times a hundred and again it goes back to prejudice and jealousy and you know uh, racism a lot of racism against uh, against the gcc in general or any islamic country so because they don't want to get them successful you know they were like until now okay they should give us our oil and khalas, but that's right so see uh, all around the world they I mean uh, everybody as I said have their eyes on Dubai uh, or the UAE or the GCC for that matter now uh, Saudi's economy is growing and uh, Kuwait is a rich country and Qatar uh, has uh, oil and money and yes. infrastructure gas and uh, they had the World Cup and you know they have half London they bought there you go there you go so the world of course will not be happy when they see a uh, certain group of people progressing more than them uh, so this is hard it's a hard pill for them to swallow but um, nobody is stopping uh, the GCC and nobody is stopping uh, you can say the Arabs from growing so uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for that yes you said like before already and the most people know it that 90% are expats in whole UAE or just Dubai that's a good question actually 90% of the UAE is uh, you can say are expats however uh, almost half of the population or 40 percent of that population lays within dubai uh, itself so you can say uh, yes majority is focused in dubai areas like hatta fujera ras al khema um al giwain northern emirates um, uh, are more more emirati focused than than expats dubai you can say is the expat hub of the uae so there are more than 90% expats here, or what would you say? Uh, statistically speaking, uh, you only have about a million, a million and a, and a little bit uh, of Emiratis in the UAE itself. And the total population of the UAE is 10 to 11 million. But uh, in Dubai you have 3.5 million, I think. And uh, it's hard to say, you know, the numbers are very hard to say with the influx of people coming in. Sometimes we have figures like 3.5 and through other sources they say, no, it's much more than that. When you count the cars on the road, it's much more than that. So it's very tough to say and it's such an international hub that you have people coming in and coming out. It's hard to, hard to count. Uh, you have a large number who are tourists, you have a large number who are residents. Of those, you have expats and you have uh, Emiratis. So, very tough to say, but uh, yes, you can say a huge, a huge chunk uh, of, uh, of Dubai is our expats. And how is it like for you locals to see like that there are so many expats? Because all over the world is racism. You know, if there are like in a room five German, like any other... Um, 
nation that's also about German the most. They are like other people, they get like, you know, of they don't course. like it. But it's also in Turkey the same, you know, they don't like about other cultures. All over the world is racism. Of course, every country uh, loves to... loves to uh, Stay under themselves. Yes, to stay stable and to stay within the community and within the culture and not to lose that. But I think uh, the UAE has done a great job with when it comes to balancing because they've preserved that culture and they haven't let go of that culture as well as the religion in balance to catering to the, to the foreigners who come with, to the UAE. Who, who don't necessarily follow uh, the religion or culture, but they respect it. Uh, so in that sense, I would say there is a good balance. So locals don't necessarily feel, I can't speak on behalf of everybody, but majority, as you see, there is no chaos, there is no issues. And as long as boundaries are not overstepped and uh, expats understand that they have, to, uh, they have to respect the culture and religion within the UAE, there are no problems. How do you see it as a local? That was one of the most asked questions also. If tourists wear like a local dress, like Kandura, <laughs> and someone asked, it should be very respectful to wear this uh, black uh, ring. Yes. I don't know the exact name. It's called, uh, this is called, the white part is called the Ghutra, and this is called the Agal. Yeah, Agal should That's be very right. hype to wear. That's right. So, uh, to that, to that extent of detail, I'm not sure, but generally I can tell you, uh, I mean, me as a local, when I see a tourist or an expat wearing it, I'm happy because yeah. it shows their enthusiasm, it shows their respect. As long as they are wearing our, na I mean, our, this is our, our, natu our national traditional uh, outfit, you can say so. It's, it must be respected in all ways. So as long as they are wearing that and respecting the boundaries and the culture and the um, religion of the country. I have, no, I personally have no issues with it. On the contrary, I, I enjoy seeing that they like our culture and they're starting to, you know, uh, yeah, to <laughs> act like a, like an Emirati and to to embrace uh, the culture that we have, not just for the flashy things that you see in Dubai, but for actually embracing the the culture. So I, I, I respect that they respect that tradition. It was not on my list, but I just got a question now. Are there also like people they faking to be a local? You know, like there are Arabs. Because some uh, one year back there was a Egypt guy in Sharjah, Mamzar Beach, and they wanted to scam us with jet ski. I will tell you later in detail. And he dressed up like a local, you know. <laughs> but I, in his face, I directly realized that he he looked like not yeah. like a local. A lot of people like to dress up in the national clothes here uh, because they've been here since since birth or their families have been here since forever. So they consider themselves as, as Emiratis, you know, this is their home at the end of the day. Um, a lot of others also try just to act local for the for the respect and to earn that uh, that uh, that you can say respectful authority or that uh, respect is all I can say to earn that kind of respect. So. Uh, a lot of the time we face that and you meet a lot of people who once as a local you start to speak to them they wouldn't they wouldn't dare answer you because they they know that I would know uh, but maybe to an expat somebody wearing a kandora anybody can pull off as a local so but I mean uh, like yeah. maybe some people using it for wrong purposes you know like definitely definitely you have that I mean you've had a lot on, of uh, women yes. or like this or on business partners business partners or women as you said or if they think that they can get some advantage to it, for example, uh, to enter a restaurant that needs a reservation, you know, they think <laughs> it might help them to walk in with a kandora. But as I said, equality has very much been uh, stabilized within the UAE. So um, uh, even being a local, it doesn't give me any priority over anybody else in terms of, uh, of living my life within the city. Uh, but a lot of people like that, uh, that, that that respect that you get uh, being a local. How is it like to marry other cultures? Within the UAE, I would say uh, it depends on, on the family. It's, uh, it's tough to say a lot of families stick to very traditional uh, local marrying a local, a uh, local man marrying a local woman, a uh, local woman marrying a local man. Um, so uh, they stick to that culture definitely and a lot of families are very have become very open-minded in a sense of marriage only for the sense of marriage so um, uh, yeah you have a lot of local families who 
who have married into different uh, different cultures and different nationalities, definitely. Are they also already so far that they accept other religions or are they still like wanted Muslims? Uh, I would say majority, uh, you will have exceptions of course, so I can't speak on behalf of everybody, but majority, uh, they like to stick within, within the same religion. How is it like with rich and poor? Like let's say there's a rich uh, local woman and a rich, no, not that rich or poor are they like also that the big family stay under themselves uh, same thing same thing follows uh, mostly mostly yes but uh, of course it's, we it's, don't yeah. talk like as generally the Lord. No, yes, no, yes 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 um, but even commonly i can tell you not necessarily because um, i can speak of my own experience with the people that i know within the community a lot of uh, uh, very very wealthy uh, locals who come from big families have married uh, other other women who are not of such big families or not that financially blessed as them so in that sense it 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 happens a lot and um, uh, i would say it's easier for the men of course uh, it's uh, so so <laughs> All over the world. so blessed blessed in that sense as well so easier for men um, and uh, because ultimately the man needs to take care of, of the woman in our culture. That's how it is. It's the same for you in Turkey. You know, and yes, religion, a... yes, yes. So the man needs to be the, the man of the household. So in that sense, yes, um, it's, it's easier for men than it is for the local women to convince their families if they are of higher caliber to marry a local man of a lower caliber. But uh, it's not a deal breaker, I would say. It's quite common nowadays. So I would come to the end and I have one more question. How do you see like the future of Dubai? The future of Dubai? Uh, or what you wish like as it should be? You see, my wishes would not, uh, would not actually be what I would wish for, for Dubai. Uh, let, me, let me clarify what I mean. Dubai always seems to, uh, to surprise us. Uh, I mean, the UAE in general seems to surprise us. And, what we expect, it always turns out to be far greater than what we wish for or what we expect. So I would not wish for what I wish for. I would wish for the trust that I have within the UAE and, uh, and the government and our sheikhs and the community as a whole. Um, I would say I put my trust in Dubai and it's uh, in the UAE in, in, in general. Uh, I say Dubai because I'm from Dubai, but I talk about the UAE in general. and. Um, the UAE where it is today, I will say number one in the world in, in a lot of aspects. So future is only only limitless. I mean, speaking uh, speaking personally in terms of business, like I said, we've we've been in the currency uh, currency business for the past uh, fourth. I'm fifth generation uh, uh, currency exchange uh, family member. So um, we we hope that that continues, and we have. Uh, we have uh, faith in the UAE to continue to be number one in the world because being number one only helps to grow uh, our businesses and our to support our families and to continue uh, generations down the line uh, to succeed within the UAE. Yeah, that was all my question. Thank you very much. Let's talk just like a simple sentence about your businesses that we push everything that we sure we, that we get people here in your restaurant definitely so and to um, your exchange also yes your... so uh, we are uh, Rida Al Ansari exchange um, we've been uh, we are one of the first uh, exchange houses you can say or money traders within the UAE since the founding of, uh, of the, the Emirates so um, uh, we've 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 been in the game for a long time and uh, uh, we have vast experience in the money exchange business. That's 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 the that's that's for the exchange business. And we are, are like all over. Dubai, that's right. right. Yeah, we are currently uh, 50 plus branches around the UAE, sure. and um, and continuing to expand uh, very quickly. I'm personally involved in the currency exchange business. Uh, simultaneously, we have other businesses such as. Um, we have a big, uh, our newest project is uh, where you're sitting right now actually, that's a Mist Restaurant and Cafe in Business Bay. Um, it's a uh, food and shisha, food and shisha restaurant. So we have a beautiful terrace on the canal view, uh, as you can see over there outside. And um, that's our newest project, as well as we're into real estate and um, uh, different businesses such as uh, home furnishing, and uh, carpet center, if you have heard of it, we are, we are involved in that. Uh, as well as um, not home for furniture 
and um, uh, Pizza Factory in the IFC. So different different businesses we uh, we 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 run in uh, in the country, and we like to keep it diverse. You know, uh, each 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 business which I named for you has nothing to do with the other. The currency exchange, food and beverage, retail. Uh, you name it so uh, they're very unrelated but we like to keep it diverse and I think that's also what uh, a lot of Emiratis uh, currently are doing within uh, the UAE and have been doing that's what helps to grow the economy and to grow the market within uh, UAE thank you very much like this video was about UAE how to be a local I think maybe if you are uh, you tell you are ready we can make a part two talk about your personal life about Definitely. more about your business it would be very nice would be my pleasure highly appreciate for thank your you time thank you so much thank you i appreciate really it. this thank information you. will change the german world like, i hope so i <laughs> hope so i hope so Definitely. because these are the question the answers all the people ask und ja freunde das war's dann mit dem video also ich hoffe dass die meisten fragen jetzt beantwortet wurden mir hat's mega spaß gemacht Lasst ein Like da, um mich zu unterstützen. Abonniert den Kanal. Wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal wieder. Peace out und ciao.